just streaming again let me know if you can hear me well see me well and um, meanwhile mm, this is gonna be the first stream when i'm not forgetting to <laughs> to push my patreon ahead so you can support me on patreon while we are waiting for the guys to give me feedback yeah morning to everyone it's the end of summer it's the first stream in autumn hope you're all good for this summer and let's get started yay thank you thank you yeah i have an open tab in my chrome browser but it's not the uh, it's not the thing we're going to be doing to, in today's stream but anyway it's quite interesting it's a way to do the random workers and instead of just walking randomly you can fly randomly like a fly <laughs> really like a fly because the path looks like this it's quite an interesting way of getting the random numbers hey everyone morning everyone okay let's get started so uh, recently i've seen some videos and gifs of people doing some ribbons animation like you can do something with your hands and then the ribbons follow in your hands and i also also seen some really nice gif from yun kiyoshi he's a really i don't know how to say he's, I, I think he's talented is the right word he's doing so many so different animations so many experiments one of the last ones that I really liked looked like this. You can imagine it's 360 pages of some GIFs with the code. This is crazy. So he did something like this. And I really liked the look and I was thinking maybe I could, could, could implement that. I haven't really implemented that one, but I started experimenting with this kind of uh, thing in 3GS and how you would build this kind of thing in 3GS and that's what we're gonna try to do today so it's gonna be mostly an experiment we might end up with this but I'm not sure we might end up with something else which is cool too hey hey everyone all right so let's get started it doesn't really matter what I'm gonna to use today like you can see the 3GS template that I'm using or the canvas sketch model it it's all the same and I hope if you're watching my streams you already understood that it's no point in asking for those code parts they are all the same nothing meaningful in there so let's start I'm gonna call this ribbon um, yeah I'm gonna copy paste mm, yeah let's try with the VGS template this time I think last time it was canvas sketch so this time it's gonna be VGS template and I'm gonna go ahead and what go ahead and what and run this on parcel ouch yeah it's been a really nice summer lots of traveling abroad lots of flights so tired of those flights finally i can just stay home in this autumn all right so here we go we got the default template running it's just the uvs and a simple plane there all right all right where do we start so well the end seems like something like this or also i think this pipe posted something similar recently yeah he's done this kind of animation unfortunately i don't have anything to put on my hands so we can do exactly the same kind of thing but hopefully we would recreate something sort of this so let's try that yeah it's really nice you should subscribe to this pipe if you haven't yet all right all right let's start let's start i'm gonna use uh, this code today visual studio code just to make a difference I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be using <laughs> Comic Sans code like in the last stream. If anybody noticed this. 
Yeah. So we got the JavaScript. I'm gonna make it bigger. Um, probably to the left. So I will not be hiding anything with my head. All right, this is a default uh, default template I'm using for the three js. I'm gonna remove the parts that don't really need. And there's a dot UI. This is basic setup, resize, and then the shader material with default shaders and then yeah that's that's it just the render function which is, which runs in request animation frame so let's really fast check if we are seeing what we what we are coding Cause really in in my past doing some html css javascript like the most shittiest thing is to edit the files that you're not really seeing in your browser <laughs> and I wanted to see the preview. All right, so let's just change this to red one. Yeah, it's all good. We can start over. Yeah, so first of all, first of all, the most interesting thing about this stream and why I actually wanted to make it, I, re I did really those, uh, I already did in the past those ribbons, something sort of this. I did the tor tornado animation which was sort of ribbons, but not quite. It's just the white lines in, in just just the white lines, really. And then also, like long ago, I actually did the stream about the real ribbons, but they were different. And that stream was in Russian, yeah, it was this one, like season two, episode five. So if somebody's interested, this is also a nice way to visualize the ribbons you can see lots of ribbons over there like not so many pixels on the screen but still you can see those ribbons in the lightning it's pretty nice but this is going to be different that one used the already existing geometry so i just loaded the geometry and i just made like hundreds of instances of that geometry and then animated something with the shader which is also cool and all but doesn't give us a lot of space in, in, in interactivity. So it's just the existing geometry. And this one is gonna be interactive. Like you can move it with your fingers. If you have ones. I mean, <laughs> if you have your fingers in a 3D space, like you have some device to do that. All right. Hopefully you'll have fingers. So you can press like on this video. Should I say slap like? All right, let's get into the business. It's just too much talking. So we have this, um, how do you hide this? Yeah, good. So we have this material and we have this geometry. This is a plain geometry. So what I wanna do when something follows my fingers, I wanna rebuild this geometry. So I wanna build this geometry on every single frame. So basically from the start to do that, Let's just introduce some class right ahead. So right away, I'm gonna do the class ribbon because I want to make a lot of ribbons today, and it's basically better to start with the class. Uh, yeah, and then constructor, which is gonna take nothing, and then I need the update function. So first of all, I'm gonna build this ribbon and add it to the scene. And to build this ribbon. Let's just do the this geometry in uh, geometry. Let's say it's one by one. So it's basically going to be kind of the same what I would already have in my template, but I'm going to just refactor it a bit. My board came from just the three JS examples, so I just converted it to the parcel way so it's so i have the import of the shaders instead of just having them as a string so template literals and that's basically it and i just made the class so i can call it actually i wouldn't say this is the best way if you go to the tumpanos uh, uh, examples there are much better ways of organizing this free js scenes and templates and making them extendable and this is a much better way for me 
this is just the way that is simple enough for my brain because I like simple stuff. I like when it's just simple as that. Uh, it's it's not a kind of sketch. It's it's a three JS for to make a difference. I, I I decided to use three JS template, but it's just you know it just doesn't really matter in the end what you're using. It's just the scene, the camera, and then you write some shaders or geometry. It's not on my GitHub, but if you check the t my latest Timpanos article, it's built on the same template. You can just copy paste it from there. Just go to the Timpanos. By the way, I actually this week. Uh, we posted the new article. Uh, I keep distracting myself from doing the animation for some reason. Okay, so I'll build the article about the triangles. Triangles. So some animations like this. So if you are interested in those, you can go check the hit GitHub and the small write-up that I did for those animations. This pretty cool. Well, I think it's pretty cool because it's triangles and they are being animated and I don't really need much just animated triangles is enough for me I think the first one I mean the second one I liked yeah I like this one yuppie yeah so go check it out and copy paste it from there all right adding the ribbon so I have the geometry let's say it's one by one and let's change the detailization like 10 by 10 and then uh, this material, let's just use material here. And then this mesh. Just gonna create this mesh. And that's it. And now we can just add this ribbon. So without all this stuff. So have I done? What have I done? So I'm gonna do this. Um, and then this scene at the ribbon mesh. And I sort of wanna make it in a loop so which one is a loop for me? It was gonna be a real short loop <laughs> today. And let's do this. And also let's create something like buttons push. And then we need to initialize that. Uh, so we got this. So we are um, essentially just creating the instance of the ribbon, adding the mesh to the scene, and then pushing this to the ribbons array. And then we can sort of update them. So it's going to be for each rib. It's not really a rib. <laughs> okay. And then ribbon update, even though it doesn't do anything so far, but still. Yep. <laughs> what else? So actually see the same thing and just to check if we are seeing the ribbon now. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and change something with that ribbon. Why am I even using it in the same file? I don't know. Okay. So it's gonna be Let's make it another aspect ratio. Yeah, so this is the ribbon now. Perfect. And we have the material and let's, for example, change well, We got this. So this is actually the vertices that we have there in the geometry. And if we just log the, this geometry What we're gonna see there is that we actually have all the vertices there in the vertex array uh, like this one so it's 121 vertices there mm. it's way too much so i kind of want to make this ribbon and for the ribbon i think i don't need uh, 
one axis of the triangles so I can go with probably this so just the matter of the direction of the ribbon I want to go and I think this is going to be the ribbon so essentially that means that this ribbon should fly to the top or to the bottom but I like top better sounds more positive <laughs> so it's going to fly to the sky today and then inevitably fall down to the earth so we have this geometry what I learned well while experimenting a lot with the um, 3GS geometries and 3GS objects that it's like in 99% uh, of the cases it's actually better to use buffer geometries than the usual geometry because this geometry I think it, at some point it's going to be just um, deprecated and nobody's going to use it because I think all the 3GS started with those geometries and then it's been converted to the buffer geometries so let's see what's going to change if we use the buffer geometry so yeah the name of the objects changed and then the way that we store the coordinates of this plane changed too so now we have the attributes uh, property and then we have for the normal position and then in the UV so instead of it being built in into something then I have this so the good the good thing about this is that um, when we build the triangles each of those triangles has three vertices and if we use the the old way of the geometry those vertices were indexed so so one single vertex could be used a couple of times and it was not handy to what I'm gonna do today because I'm gonna get my hands dirty and change this geometry inside out so let's change it to something even smaller just three triangles and let's see what the position looks like it's, it's gotta be it so this is a flawed 32 array and then we have just the coordinates like uh, the width of the of the plane is one and, and the height is two let's change it to one back yeah so it's minus 0.5 this is this coordinate i believe and then this is yeah so first three numbers is just the coordinate of the left top corner and then the second three numbers is the coordinate of the right top corner and then we have this coordinate and this and this and this and this and so on so we have 24 which means we have 8 which means we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 coordinates so there we go we have all the coordinates and they're forming this plane so what we could do here so inside the update function remember we have three rows now of the triangles so inside the update function i want to move this um, plane one point to the top i mean one triangle strip to the top and to do this uh, let's just run this okay i'm running this ribbon update lots of the times now but what if i just call it one single time update here so just for the test and debug purposes and then log this now we have this ribbon perfect and then inside the update function let's get those vertices so we're going to get this array and then this pp it's like positions positions and then it's going to be float 32 array and i kind of want to convert it to the real array right away because I want to use the uh, some basic array functions on this one and I want to remove uh, uh, last bits of it so let's do this this pp op. so it's going to remove <laughs> first to last element of the array doesn't really matter right now but still and then I want to update those positions so I want to set them back to the to this array so I'm gonna do this 
is geometry attributes position equals new floor 32 array uh, this this pp and then i need to update things and i think 3js has the specific article about updating things like how to update things and then needs update and this is the line i'm looking for so i need to set something to update the things so it's going to be this geometry 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 attributes position needs update true and let's see what's going to happen nothing really because why attribute on a blood callback is not a function what maybe this is the the array i should set here radius is none attribute is likely to have none values let's change uh, let's just see what's what's inside of this So this pp doesn't have any non values so maybe it's because um, number of the vertices my experiment failed so let's just try to let's try to uh, where are we making this let's try to make two pops oh yeah i know why because each of the vertices it actually has three coordinates and when i'm making one pop i'm actually breaking the whole algorithm down because it's not divided by three anymore so i need to make at least three pops to remove one vertex <laughs> still not working all right uh... Well, the, the error it's giving me is not really saying me much. The position attribute is like, okay, let's change it. Let's, let's check how the position attribute looks like. This geometry attributes position, let's log it in. Well, it, it looks okay. Let's just, I'm gonna check it before and after I did this change to it. Or well, the format seems the same. I just removed three vertices, and then the count, the count stayed the same. The count with the vertices stayed the same. So maybe uh, this attribute dynamic could it be the thing I'm looking for? dynamic where's the dynamic here not here anymore i've seen this attribute in, in the past versions of the 3gs maybe this is the thing to change no not yet hmm what could be the reason following me okay not yet so i'm actually cr creating the correct area of new vertices and what i need to change then i need to tell the 3gs somehow to update the things of these geometry attributes position Format this a bit. We have a bug right away. Isn't it wonderful? Hmm. It could make those things break down. Well, maybe this is not a good thing to change the number of vertices when I created the mesh. So maybe instead of just removing the vertices. I could uh, uh, just add one more so I could do this pp and shift from the other side of the array and then add something like 555 five, five. so that the number of the 
coordinate stays the same inside the vertex and maybe that would be good yeah, at least it doesn't have any error you know so this is what <laughs> what it's doing now so we just spoiled the bottom triangle and now it points to the to the top so we changed the coordinate of one vertex inside the geometry and it's all good all good but we took the bottom one I kind of wanted to well anyway let, let, let's go to the bottom so it's going to be minus 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 we actually want to just the x and y minus and this could be zero something seems not right Okay, actually, I think that's okay. We're just removing the bottom. I think this is the right way. I just messed up in my mind. So we are removing the last, the last triangle at the bottom, and we are building one more triangle on the top. So this is actually essentially the moving to the top thing. So it's actually working right. So we're just popping the last one, and then adding one at the beginning. Yeah, this is the way. So now we should calculate somehow this coordinate to add at the beginning and just set something like this width that would be just one and we could we could also i think we could make this geometry a bit bigger maybe in a, in a second okay so we have this width and this width we're going to use this width to calculate the coordinate of the next triangle and boom, 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 boom. how are we gonna do that we don't need this before and after things so the thing was that we actually changed the number of vertices in the mesh in the geometry after we created it and i think there might might be the way to fix this i just don't know at the moment so it's better to stay with the same number of the vertices inside the geometry so it works hello cheapo 2109 okay 2109 was the first car I used to drive. <laughs> it's just the the model of the car being produced here. Okay. <laughs> so we need to calculate this. So I pop in the last one, then we add in one more, and this one should be dependent on the on the thing. So the y coordinate is actually the amount, like the speed we are moving to the top. So it would be also one. And the this coordinate is going to be this width. It's just this width divided by two because we have both sides. And let's see if we're making it right. Yeah, so we we are now moving to the top. I'm going to change the the color now so we can see better. Yeah, so we're moving one triangle to the top. We actually need to move two triangles to the top. I think it's better to, to, to stay at the correct angle. And I could do something like this. Uh, J. I think <laughs> it's better to be done with the splice, probably. But what the hell? The most un... The most not beautiful JavaScript stream ever. So we're gonna just pop the last six uh, vertices and then add six more. And then we're gonna be adding six more. I actually wanna add one on the right and one on the left. So I'm just gonna add the minus here. And we just moved our thing to the top. So now we could uh, change the like the speed. Let's maybe set the speed was let's say one i think we gotta move the camera a bit further ahead so we see this movement thing so now we see it from far and then we could could update things in the request animation frame loop now and let's use time here and when we're going to be updating things i'm gonna use this time so it's some values that just is constantly growing 
and what else what else what else oh that's probably the reason yeah you're probably right this is the reason then buffer geometry does that to optimize performance probably and all this stuff so we're not actually recalculating the number of vertices just updating them uh, okay and then we could instead of this i could just use time time and then i could remove uh, one debug update from here and let's see what's gonna happen so it's actually started moving <laughs> I don't know if you see this. It's kind of fast. You can slow it down. You can just. Um, it's the best way to slow it down. I think we could do just something like this. Oh, yeah, by slowing it down, I mean I'm gonna make this triangles a lot smaller. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, but still, the thing is moving. It's alright. Maybe move camera even further, farther ahead from the... All right. Maybe we could just multiply time with something like three. Yeah, anyway, we got it moving. So the next thing I want to do, maybe I could make more vertices inside this line and then i'm going to change the behavior like the path that it's following in a second first of all i'm going to create more of those like 30 let's say so now it's more like a ribbon well, it starts kind of slowly but then it goes yeah but i'm already changing vertices in class ribbon what do you mean what did you mean what I just did? So yeah, it's gonna be kind of longer, okay, 300. Uh, just uh, that it starts slow because it has lots of tight triangles and then it goes, flies into the void. I think it's gonna break down too because the, the number of the vertices would not correspond to the starting one. So. I think you better be using the default geometry, like plane geometry for that one. But I'm not, not gonna go into this one because I don't really need to change the number of the vertices. I just need to update them. All right, so do I have some, uh, have some console logs and that's why it's being slow. The console logs in the request animation frame can slow down animation significantly. So pay attention to that. You just leave lots of console logs with some objects in your request animation frame loop it's gonna just you, know, you, you, you would be losing the fps okay the next thing i want to do i want to create a path that is going yeah, i want to create some kind of rotation and instead of um, shader material i might be using just the default thing <laughs> Maybe not yet. Mm. So I'm gonna do something like this X equals. Uh, I'm gonna initialize new value, like this position equals you know. And then I'm gonna add it. Ah. Uh, what the hell? So it's going to be position, the current position where I want to draw my thing my ribbon okay 
going to be minus here and that's why we're going to be moving okay 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 so the thing is i actually can rotate this thing already and this is kind of default rotation now so it's just the zero angle all, 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 all the time so i can do the rot rotation equals that would be the array then it's going to be this width divided by two multiplied by mass sine sine of the time and then the same goes for the second coordinate and then i can just do like plus rotation zero and then I can I should rotate it not in the y axis but actually in x and z coordinates because y is the axis it goes to the top so let's just rotate it and then the same but with the minus so this thing is changing with the time so now when my line goes to the top to the sky it should be rotating around the y-axis right and this coordinate is just zero i should uh, i should just initialize it with a zero value so it doesn't add anything so it still goes to the top because time grows constantly and then it should be rotating let's see so it actually does that now we have the rotated geometry which is kind of nice by itself i just like this this kind of shapes and it goes forever to the top so now it should change somehow the x y and z coordinates and we're gonna have the growing ribbon following some coordinate so let's do the basic one we're just gonna do the circle so this position x equals mass sine as well and then time multiplied or divided no idea multiplied by three and the radius should be bigger than one so it's kind of five and then the same goes for the so it's x and y this time because it should be rotating in front of us and let's see what's going to happen yeah, it still goes to the top because i'm adding the time all the whole time but now we got this nice cool shape it's actually a 3d ribbon already following some path <laughs> it's kind of nice already so i could just multiply this by zero we could do we could do this we do here like uh, three plus mass sine time uh, I don't know, multiplied by five. I want to create some nice shape which is repeating itself, by the way. Should be some kind of torus knot or something like that. This doesn't look cool yet, but let's uh, let's do something interesting with this now. We can actually use uh, some other material. I don't really need this shader material now. Or do I? I don't. I don't. So I need to go to the class ribbon and then instead of this material I'm gonna say I'm gonna use M and then we need to create this M and then color I don't know Let it be red. Yeah, I need to set a lot of attributes. Actually, like Visual Studio Code, it helps a lot. It's autocomplete and all this stuff. So now we have it black. Why we have it black? Because we don't have any lightning on the scene. Let's add the lightning. And go somewhere here. I'll just add ambient and directional lights. Directional light. Just 
can grab the examples. So this is the white light. Let's set it to one. Uh, it should be like this. No, things not defined. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, now we have some basic lightning scene. <laughs> we might add two directional lights. Just copy paste that. And maybe the ambient light, yeah. I forgot it was my intention. Add a little bit of the ambient light so it's not all black in the shadow part, but some kind of just a different lighting to see it in this 3D, you know. Yeah, so it's kind of 3D now. <laughs> Doesn't look too cool. Well, I, I want to add the anti aliasing. Should look a bit better. Okay. I think also the speed is too much, so we see the edges, and and that means that means uh, I need to hide something here because it's too much of a code. I only need a ribbon. And that means we could move it a bit slower, I think. Yeah, it's gonna have more vertices and gonna look more smooth, more beautiful now. It it just looks periodic and to do to change that I'm gonna do something like this. This is kind of weird shape. But it still loops because uh, how to make it not break. Oh, I, th I think I should have changed it here. Yeah. Now we have a three D line. So it's being rotated periodically, and then. So I, I, I don't have hand in the 3D, you know, I don't have fingers in the 3D. So I had to make virtual fingers, like this is my virtual fingers, which is moving the whole time like this. Okay, what's next? What's next we could do? I could move a bit closer to using fingers actually, because I can use three ray caster. So let's initialize the ray caster here. So we need to close the ribbon class and then go to the sketch. There's a lot of things you could do with this one now. I could initialize a lot of uh, ribbons here. I don't have Telegram chat, but everyone who supports me on a Patreon gets access to the Discord and then we can ask them some questions or whatever. And my ribbon moves well my ribbon well i'm changing the geometry of my ribbon i'm just removing the last two triangles and adding two more triangles at the front and that's it and it moves because i'm changing the geometry it was like first 20 minutes of the stream you know so i created the ray caster then i need to create the mouse um, yeah let's add some mouse following for this thing Boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I need to add some mouse events. Got a functional mouse move, which is changing the the mouse position. And then I should add this function, this handler. It's not the window, it's gonna be on this container. 
let's move it to the click and then inside of this uh, it's not here it's outside of this function inside of this function I can actually perform this check like the intersects the rate cast and then check for the intersections so it's gonna be this ray caster this mouse this camera right I could actually do it like this don't really need this function so I have the this keyword yeah I have the intersects let's lock those intersects and I also need to check for the intersection with something this has got to be the array but what, what's going to be the array here I kind of want to create something some additional plane here like uh, this uh, touch me equals free mesh and it's going to be this time it doesn't really matter what geometry I'm using 20 by 20 it's, it's also 20 by 20 and then the what bothers me is actually tries to help me so much it, it, it gets in the way <laughs> mostly so I have this this touch me thing. I think I don't I don't I don't actually need even to add it to this scene. I can just do this touch me here. But for the debug proper process, yeah, this scene. Let's see. We code it too much. We need to see something. So now we have this kind of grid, which is just the plane I, I added, and then on click. Raycaster is not defined because this raycaster. That's right there. And if I click, intersects is not defined. Uh, intersects, yeah, of course. Yeah, so let's see. We are clicking, we're getting some values. And the value I'm looking for is actually the point value. This is the point value right there. Intersect zero point. So let's see if it's all right. So the left is minus six, nine, zero, and the bottom right, yeah, it's kind of the same. So it works all right. We have it there. We have it there. So now I want to make my line move to some position to do that i'm going to be using the lerp function and i think we have the lerp function for the three dimensional vectors in 3gs so i could just use it inside my mm, inside my ribbon class so let's hide it all again and let's see i actually like what it's drawing here yeah, it's a 3d shape and yeah, it's beautiful I think the thing that is missing here, Akela, you should think better. I think we need to recalculate the the normals for this thing because it's not being recalculated now. It's just colored the same way. That, that's what the thing that bothered me. I was trying to do all the kind of things rotations, but it still doesn't look 3D. The lighting is not right. And to do this, I think you need to recalculate the uh, normals so it's going to be this geometry well it's actually right here so nice of you i think this also mm. is it just the vertex normals now okay i think it looks much better now or is it just me?
Yeah, I think the lightning is correct now because if I'm looking from this angle, it's all bright. And if I'm looking from the bottom, it's all dark. I think it's correct now. It's just that it's moving in one single you know, plane and it looks plain boring. Well, not that boring, but still. Okay. I don't get any error for the compute face normals. Do I really need compute face normals here? Well, it, it does compute all those normals, but I'm not sure if the mesh physical material really using face normals or vertex normals. I don't know. Well, let's leave both of them. All right, so now we have the kind of finger where we can point to which direction the plane should go. Now the last thing left is um, to update the position that the ribbon is going to. And to do this, I have already the position, which is this one. And I need it to move to the target. So I'm going to set the target. I don't actually need to, to have target right here. I need to have target globally. So like in this one. Yeah, we have the target and then we need to set the target like when we click anywhere. This is gonna be the target. And let's set the target by default to zero. All right, and then every time we call the ribbon update, I wanna use this target here. So now we should have the target right here. Just to check it's working. Yeah, it's all good. It's zero, zero, zero. And then we click somewhere and it's not zero anymore. So we could control the ribbon now. So yeah. I can just set the target to position because position is this thing that should change with time. So the thing I could do here is this position equals some new three vector three and then lerp vectors and I'm going to use um, this position which is the current position where I'm drawing the triangles and then the target and then some lerp factor value like zero, I don't know, like this. So now I should have the position. I could remove this. Yeah, it actually draws the ribbon to those positions. So now I could change the uh, click, the actual mouse move. Better to move it quicker. And now I can draw with my mouse. Yeah. So if you, if you if you would have a device, you would just use those coordinates from your fingers, I don't know, from your virtual reality device or something like that. Hopefully I would be able to buy some. And then you could connect this line to each of your fingers and then you could just do that. Well, the other thing that could be added here, I think, those uh, vertices they stay in static after i draw them like the triangles stay in place what if what you could do also you could change the previous coordinates too like so they grow bigger so it looks kind of more like a ribbon like something that flows in the air that goes with inertia i'm not going to do that today i'm going to leave it as that i think it's kind of beautiful now i can remove the touch me part i can just draw something This actual 3D ribbon, uh, I like it. I think we could move uh, rotation faster. And the nice thing that we could do here also, we could, you know what bothers me here, like one of the last things we're gonna do. Um, well, first of all, I think I can just multiply this by math random. Yeah, 
so we get different colors every time looks right to me okay and what i wanted to do i keep forgetting keep losing the I don't think that's hard. This is just a generic 3JS material. You can lerp them as well. You can even use the shader material because at the start I just used the shader material. You can change the uniforms. So yeah, I think basically you could change the color of the mesh physical material. You know, we could do the crazy scene. It's just <laughs> what you asked led me to what if we could do something like uh, I wanted to change material on every frame but maybe this is not the good thing to do but let's just try that Do I need to wrap it in the color thing? I don't know. Well, not as cool as it sounded, but yeah, you could you could change the color on every single frame. All right. Uh, what I wanted to do the last. I want to rotate this more so it looks more ribbon like. So rotate that more. This is the rotation I was using. So maybe I should multiply this by five. Yeah, it's kind of looking cooler. I think also it's quite long right now. So it's 300, this is too much. Let's use 50. Yeah, now you can do all kind of things, it's gonna be following your course, or you can also change the width. Like when the mouse speed changes, you can change the width and it's gonna be white and then small again. But I like I like to play it even like this. It looks cool to me. Maybe the other color. Yeah, probably could change the color with the time. Okay, okay. This is like not, 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 not sniping, this is called, right? You just ask me for something and then I can't think about anything else. Time. Divided by four. I don't know what's gonna happen. This is too fast. Maybe this is not the best option to do. No, not like that. Ah, uh, let's change the color. Yeah, yeah. Let's use HSL. Let's see Too late, too late. We gotta do this. What's wrong now? Is it changing the color? Yeah, it does, but just too slow, okay. Well, sort of, sort of that. Something like this. Now we need to make it slower and then it's gonna be beautiful changing 
lots of colors purple it's blue now it's greenish yeah i think it also it already looks nice what i wanted to do like right now the rotation is dependent on the you see it's been even if i'm moving mouse slowly it's still rotating my plane with the same speed so what you could do here the last the last bit i promise it's gonna be inside the update function i'm calculating the new position so let's call it the next position and then we have the current position which is this position so i could calculate the distance that distance so let's uh, let's just have the this travel like how much the line the ribbon traveled and on every step i'm going to add the distance it traveled and this distance is going to be this next pos distance to this position and then after that i can update this position with this next position all right looks good to me but let's console log Uh, it's all zero because we're not moving yeah it started to move and we're gaining the distance now we are stopping yeah, it doesn't grow so now instead of using the time for rotation we could just use the uh, where was the rotation we could use travel parameter should calibrate it because now it's too much <laughs> obviously but so the faster you move the more it's going to be rotating and then when i'm going slowly it's going to be just staying kind of plain and that's it i think you also could connect that to the angle change like uh, we could calculate the change of the angle of the mouse and then when it changed a lot like when the when there's a curve we would be just rotating our line as well yeah i think that's it it still moves in the same same 3d thing but i could change that too what if i uh, yeah i could change this I think that's too much. So it's kind of going to be moving in a 3D space. It's not going to be overlapping itself. Yeah, I think I like how it looks. But of course, do lots of those ribbons, and they're all going to be following the mouse. We could just introduce some random things. It's beautiful because it's interactive and you can use it because it's, if to, to to create such a static shape it's quite easy i already did that but to create an interactive one was quite fun hope you like that so guys thank you for being with me now this is just up to you to experiment with this you can maybe come up with something and i'd be glad if you tag me on the twitter or anywhere and send me your results i'm always glad to see what nice things people come up with because i'm not that creative myself i think so so maybe you could do something real beautiful with those lines thank you for staying with me on this sunday morning hope you like that i'm wishing you a good day if you have any questions just you know like the video Add some comments, maybe something else. Oh, the blending mode. Well, let's try that. I'm gonna use additive blending. Maybe it's gonna change something. The last bit I'm gonna do. Boop, boop, boop. Hmm. 
No. I think you should you should have a lot of those lines to make the additive blending work out good. Like lots of those lines overlapping itself, and then it's gonna be fun. Because one line is not so fun. Oops. Yeah, thanks everybody. Have a great day. Waiting for your comments, waiting for your feedback. Hope you're gonna have a great day. See ya.